In this video, we'll demonstrate how to integrate VMware Identity Manager with Active Directory Federation Services. To begin, open Server Manager and select Manage, then Add Roles and Features. First, select Role-Based or Feature-Based Installation for the installation type, and then select your intended server. Enable the Active Directory Federation Services role, and then begin the ADFS install process. Once the installation process finishes, we need to configure the Federation service. Navigate to the notifications icon in Server Manager and click Configure the Federation service on this server. We are creating the first Federation server for this deployment and we'll use our existing administrator account to connect to ADFS. We'll supply our wildcard SSL certificate and update our Federation service name to adfs.airwlab.com which will be the endpoint where our ADFS service will be hosted. Lastly, enter a friendly name for your Federation service display name. Specify the service account that will be used for ADFS by either creating a group managed service account or providing an existing domain user account or group managed service account. A database is required for ADFS and you can either use a Windows internal database or an existing SQL Server database. For simplicity, we'll create a Windows internal database. If you are using a Windows internal database and you are prompted to overwrite an existing ADFS database on the server, ensure you choose to overwrite before continuing. Click Configure to begin the installation and wait for the process to complete. Once the installation is complete, return to Server Manager and then navigate to Tools, ADFS Management, Expand Service and select Endpoints, and then scroll down to find the Metadata Endpoints section. Find the Federation Metadata Endpoint and then navigate to this endpoint in order to download a copy of your Federation Metadata XML. This Federation Metadata XML will be used to establish trust with ADFS as an identity provider from VMware Identity Manager. Log in to your existing VMware Identity Manager console using an account with administrator access and then navigate to the administration console. Confirm that your chosen directory is synced and contains at least one synced user, which we will use to authenticate with later. Under Setup, User Attributes, confirm that any required attributes for your domain users are marked as required. Note that if you need to make changes here, you will need to delete and then resync your directory before these changes will apply. Navigate to Identity and Access Management and then Identity Providers. To add ADFS as an identity provider, we'll need to select Add Identity Provider, Create Third Party IDP. Enter ADFS for the identity provider name and then open the Federation Metadata XML file we previously downloaded, copy the full XML and paste it in the SAML metadata field. Click Process IDP Metadata to configure our identity provider based on the specifications noted in the metadata. This establishes trust with ADFS as the identity provider for VMware Identity Manager. Notice that the name ID format mappings for the SAML response have been auto-populated based on the Federation metadata specifications. To enable our corp.local domain users to authenticate using this identity provider, we'll select the corp.local directory that we previously synced. We could configure specific network ranges to use this identity provider, but we'll use all ranges for simplicity. We need to specify which authentication methods can authenticate users for this given identity provider. For this example, we'll configure password authentication, Kerberos authentication, and integrated Windows authentication. The supplied authentication method names must be unique. We can enable the single sign-out configuration so that users are logged out of their IDP session once they sign out of the application portal. You can optionally supply a sign-out URL and redirect parameter. 
but we'll leave the defaults and allow the users to be redirected to the identity provider using VMware Single Logout. To finalize establishing trust between VMware Identity Manager and ADFS, we'll need to provide the service provider metadata from VMware Identity Manager to ADFS. Click the service provider metadata link to open the metadata URL for use in an upcoming step. Lastly, return to the VMware Identity Manager console and click Add to finish creating this third-party identity provider for ADFS. Return to the ADFS management and navigate to Trust Relationships, Relying Party Trust. Then click Add Relying Party Trust. Begin by importing the Service Provider Federation Metadata URL from VMware Identity Manager that we previously opened. Specify a friendly display name and then continue without configuring multi-factor authentication. Select Permit All Users to Access This Relying Party and then finalize the Add Relying Party Trust Wizard. Now we need to create claim rules to specify how our claims are processed for our service provider. Begin by adding a rule and select Send LDAP Attributes as Claims and give the rule a friendly name. Then select our Active Directory for the Attributes tour and we'll map our email address LDAP attribute to email address in the outgoing claim type. Create another rule and select send claims using a custom rule and then provide a friendly name for this rule. Then paste the provided custom rule from the video transcript. This rule will transform the claim into a format that VMware Identity Manager can use to authenticate the request. Remember to change the service provider name qualifier claim property at the end of this rule to your own VMware Identity Manager tenant. Apply the created claim rules and then return to your VMware Identity Manager tenant. Navigate to Identity and Access Management and then click Policies. Click the default access policy set to edit our existing access policy. For simplicity, we'll remove our existing policy rules and then add a new policy rule. This policy rule will use all network ranges and apply to all device types. This policy rule will use the password local directory authentication method to allow our local users to log into the VMware Identity Manager console. Click OK to finalize this rule and then add a new policy rule. This rule will apply to all network ranges and all device types again we want this rule to apply only to our corp.local users. We'll configure our authentication methods to first attempt Kerberos authentication and then fall back on Windows authentication if that fails or is unavailable. We'll fall back on requiring the user's password if Windows authentication fails or is unavailable as well. Click OK to finalize this rule. Our policy rules apply in the order that they appear, so we need to drag our corp.local users policy rule to the top so that it is processed first. Otherwise, our other rule that we created will attempt to authenticate all users using the password local directory authentication method. After you've rearranged your policy rules, click save. To test, we'll switch over to a Windows 10 resource in our network and navigate to our VMware Identity Manager URL. When prompted for our credentials, we'll supply one of our domain users from corp.local. Instead of being prompted for their credentials through VMware Identity Manager, the access policy will send a claim to ADFS for authentication using the authentication methods that we've defined. After authenticating, the user has access to their bookmarks and catalog of applications. If we attempt the same authentication flow from the VMware Workspace ONE Windows application by providing our VMware Identity Manager URL and our corp.local domain username, you'll see that we are prompted to authenticate using Windows Integrated Authentication. After authenticating, the user has access to their bookmarks and catalog of applications as normal.